Here's our full review on the Savage Impulse Predator straight pull action rifle. So Savage Impulse Predator, we received one in 6.5 Creedmoor. This is our full review with a hunt report. First off, let's go through the different specs of the line of rifles. So there's a Savage Impulse Big Game. Feel free to pause this and check these out with more detail or hit our website for more information. This is the Impulse Big Game with the Verde camo. You can see the magazine is flush and everything here comes threaded every one of them the 5 8 by 24. this is the hog hunter which is slightly lighter they do have an 18 inch configuration in 308 and you can see there they all come with the accu stock with accu fit the accu trigger and then um like i stated before threaded on there this is the one we received we received one of these in 65 creedmoor this is the predator and as you can see there 22 250 243 are also going to be released in these, which is excellent for predator hunters and varmint hunters. These are two of the most popular predator rounds, so that's good. And then last is the newly announced, just a couple days ago, the Impulse Elite Precision. Um, there's all the details there on that. Um, this is straight from their new model press release. So let's look at the rifle itself. It's a unique rifle to Savage at this price point. It's got the hex lock, which is basically your traditional lockup has been redone with ball bearings. So when you close that bolt, those ball bearings lock that in to the action and it does not release itself until the trigger is pulled and the round is, is shot. Or if you press number five, the button on the back of the bolt. It also has, speaking of the bolt, a multi-position and ambidextrous bolt handle. So you can change the position of that on the right side or switch it over to the left side. Let's say you want to predator hunt at night, you're on a tripod and you want to be able to work that action with your left hand, you can do that. Then it has the tang safety, again, the quick release, like I mentioned, and um, the bolt release there. So this is the Savage video talking about all the different features of this rifle. At its heart is Hexlock, a robust bolt design with bearings that expand to allow for superior safety. As gas pressure from a fired round builds, Hexlock remains engaged. Impulse's multi-position ambidextrous bolt handle allows for multiple positions for the bolt handle angle, in addition to right or left hand position. And with the exclusive Savage technologies you trust, like AccuStock, AccuFit, and AccuTrigger. Impulse, it's the only American-made straight pull rifle. When efficiency matters, Savage delivers. I could not do a better coverage of those. So this is our range report. We were able to, once we got the rifle, take it out to the desert, which is my range, and we set up at 100 yards. We had three different types of ammo that we were going to shoot, along with reloaded 90 grain Nossler Varmageddon ammo, which is what we were going to focus on when we went on our hunt using this. So we set it up with a Vortex Strike Eagle, the 5 to 25, and you can see there the AICS pattern mag. The bolt is out sitting there. Um, we had it all laid out. We were able to run it through the chronograph as well as do our grouping. One thing we noticed on the bolt was it was new. It's a new rifle, you know, to us, straight out of the box. So it was a little bit stiff in the beginning. And just getting your mind to realize you don't have to go up with the bolt, just pull straight back was a little bit of a challenge, but it was overcome pretty quickly. So those, that's the ammo we used, the Hornady. Um, we did not use the prime ammo. There was not enough for us to do any grouping on that. And with the way ammo is nowadays, um, we were appreciative of what we got. And there is the setup. Um, we were shooting the target there on the hillside, like I said, 100 yards. And David was laying prone on a mat with everything all locked up, including using the uh, Edgewood shooting bag there in the back which is really handy, it's stiff, and it's nice when you're shooting from prone position. Here are the groups. So the first was the ELD match 147 grain. Now, match bullets for varmint hunting, there's, you know, I am one to say, listen, try to avoid match bullets for varmint hunting. Use a varmint bullet, but a lot of people use the match bullets. So when we were sighting this in, we were actually 
thinking that, listen, we're going to go out with the 90 grain, but we're also going to use some of the match ammo as well. Just kind of test it on bigger animals like rock chuck. Um, just to see if they are going to poke a hole in it or if they're going to blow them up like a varmint bullet would. But you can see here it was windy. The box was moving. Should have secured it better. That was um, our fault, but it shot great. I mean, this shot really, really well, as you can see there. And I will have the, you know, the information as far as group size after these three different rounds that we shot through there. This took place in April when we did this, so ammunition at that time was really hard to get, and manufacturers were having a hard time just filling orders that they had, so they weren't readily available to send out to people like us. So we actually um, got some of this from Riley that works over at Guns America. He had some leftover from all his shooting. So you can see there the first two shots touching each other, just like the first group. This being the 140 grain, the other being the 147 grain. I mean, those are some nice groups for a rifle that hadn't really been fully broken in. So let's now switch over to the next one, which is the ELDX Hunter. That's the 143 grain. This is a very popular round in the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, is it good for varmint hunting? Maybe Predator. You know, maybe bigger, bigger varmints like Rock Chuck. Yes, definitely. But in this case, we were just shooting for groups. Um, we were not planning on using the ELDX Hunter at all. We were very pleased with the groups that we shot from this rifle. So here are the different group sizes. This is for the factory ammo, not for the, uh, the Nosler. And you can see there that the uh, 140 grain ELD match, I mean, that's a great group. This is a rifle that was just out of the box. We mounted the scope, we cleaned it up a little bit, and then went down and started shooting it. I mean, right out of the box accuracy, this impulse did really well, and we were very pleased with it. Okay, so now let's move into the hunt report. Warning, this video contains images of legal hunting activities. If you are offended by these types of images, please leave now. So after a shooting at the range, we went ahead to South Idaho and met up with Cash. And as you can see, the farmer is working there. This is a farm as well as a cattle ranch. And the rock chucks that live in the rim rock alongside of the pastures just cause absolute havoc with the holes they dig. Cows will fall into them. They'll step into them, break their legs. I mean, it is absolutely destructive as far as what they do. So you can see this is the 325 yard range. You can see the pasture right there. And then you can see the rim rock that most of the rock chucks live in. And these rock chucks were getting very big as you'll see in the video. And then that is our shooting location up on that hill. That's 325 yards away from this location. And we shot all along the edge of this pasture. And there is a part of it to the left of this picture where the rock chucks have gone in and basically eaten everything. So I get asked a lot, what do we use to film? This is my Sony a7S III. It's a mirrorless camera. We're filming in 4K. I'm using the Sony FE 200-600 millimeter lens. And we've got the Benro tripod and head. I'm recording. He's on the move. I got him. Okay, that was a headshot on that, as you can hear me saying. Look carefully. The shot was a little bit low, but it cut through the grass and ended up still Savage. killing that rock chuck dead. Pulse, 90 and that moving, a it's a headshot. See how it went through there? So look at all the rock chucks out there. If you pause this right now and look, you will see on the left and then move your way over to the right. There's gotta be about eight or nine rock chucks in there in various locations. Here's the rest of the hunt. I'll drop in afterwards. You get that one without hitting the tree branch. Two to the left playing with each other. That's what I'm looking at. He is facing left. Yep. Find me. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's got him. Yeah, because I saw a glistening on the rock. It might have been blood. I saw a spray. Okay. There's another one still waiting. 
savage uh, impulse. Go ahead. Got him. Savage impulse hit. I'm recording, there's two of them. Kill that one right up on top. Good shot. The other one's moving to the left down below. There he goes, he's moving back to the right. See him under the tree. Try not to move so much. Savage impulse. What's the yardage on these? 325. 325 on the first two and this one. I am recording. Hit, go to the left. See him, he ran up part of the way right to the right of the wheel. Oh, he just disappeared in the brush. Hit 90 grain, savage, impulse. I'm recording, kill him. Savage, impulse, hit. What's the yardage on these? 272? 272. Nice shot. Savage, impulse, straight pull action, 6.5 Creedmoor with match Hornady bullets. What grain? 147 grain. Basically disintegrated his face. Go. Hit. Hornady match bullets again. What's the range on that? Straight up, down below where you missed. I'm recording. Hornady, hit. Here's some close ups of the rifle and the rock chest we shot with the match ammo, which did very well. It performed well on these heavier animals. Ground squirrels, I probably wouldn't recommend it still. Coyotes, I still have a problem with it because as you lose velocity, you lose energy. And as far as the bullets expanding, you know, there, there is some testing that we need to do with ballistic gelatin. We'll get to that in the future. So next we handed the rifle off to Cash and he actually did an ambush 360 predator hunt solo. So there's no video. And you can see he took these three coyotes out using it. Um, again, it took him a little bit to get down to where he understood how the action worked and get rid of his muscle memory as far as lifting the bolt up as opposed to just pulling it back. But he felt this shot very well. I'll have his thoughts at the end of the video. And then this last picture here was he had the three and then he finished up one more, which he got. And these ranged all the way out to 300 yards. On one of these, he just punched it right in the chest, 300 yards. When he went to sight it in before he went out, he said the first two shots of sight in were touching each other dead on. He said, I didn't need to do anything else. I went out. And everything he shot right here just died very well. Again, those 90 grain Barmageddon's are excellent for this. So David ran some drone video as Cash and I were going out to pick up the different um, rock trucks that we shot. And you can see we're walking out to the tree and that's where the headshot one was right there but look at look at the pasture right there look at the trails going into the rim rock and out of the rim rock coming through that fence and how the pasture is just eaten down right there and dead in a lot of spots 
That is what these rock chucks do. So along with digging gigantic holes, I mean, they're big. Some of these were reaching the 16 pounds um, level. So along with doing that, you know, they go out there and they just eat and eat and eat to gain that weight and put it on because normally around July or so they go down and they'll stay down during the heat and then through the winter. That's the headshot. You can see the bullet trail right there, how it dropped a little bit low. So let me read some thoughts. And I'm reading these basically verbatim from what they talked about. Cash said the following. I used this impulse predator over two days during a coyote hunt called the Ambush 360. A hunter in southern Idaho with shots from 100 yards out to just over 300 yards. I was using hand-loaded 90-grain Nasser of Armageddon projectiles. Overall, I really enjoyed shooting the Impulse Predator rifle. I have not been a Savage fan in a long time, but the fit and finish and overall quality of this rifle has piqued my interest once again in Savage. The ability to make adjustments to the rifle to fit my shooting style was helpful during my coyote hunts. In particular, being able to adjust the bolt to a vertical angle made working the action during fast shooting more ergonomic. When I confirmed zero on the impulse, the first two shots touched each other at 100 yards and were dead on, which is, was all I needed before heading out for the hunt. The accuracy of this rifle, shooting the hand-loaded 90-grain Barmageddon bullets, allowed me to comfortably take the 300-yard shot with a center punch right through the chest. I would like to use one of the impulse rifles for daytime predator calling, then switch the bolt over to the left for nighttime calling off a tripod. Savage is bringing back old technology, and they're bringing it back into relevance with this straight pull action in their impulse line of rifles at an affordable price. Looking into the future of the impulse rifle line, I'm sure that Savage has released this knowing it is a suitable platform for a full line of interchangeable barrels and bolt faces. I, I Eric, will have more on that in a little bit. I'm looking forward to the evolution of the Savage impulse line of rifles. And then David's thoughts on this. David's was a little bit different. He said, I felt that this rifle was very accurate right out of the box. I was able to shoot three different factory loads and hand load around with great results. The rifle overall felt good, but I wish they would have upgraded to a more substantial stock, like something of the higher end 110 rifles they offer. Some features that stood out was the built-in recoil pad. He liked that. The tang safety, the AICS pattern magazine, accompanied by a very nice magazine release that he stated is easy to operate and accessible. I felt the bolt operation was stiff. However, I did not adjust the bolt handle angle, which may have helped bolt operation. Additionally, we only had the rifle in the field for a short amount of time. I feel that my opinion may change if I had more time to put more rounds through the rifle and get past what we consider a good break-in point. Although straight pull actions have existed for some time, this was a new experience for me, and I can see the appeal in the design. My hope is when we receive the requested 22250 version of the Savage Impulse, I will be able to give a more thorough review of the rifle. So building off of what David said real quick, um, we did only have the rifle for a short amount of time. We would love to be able to put hundreds and hundreds of rounds through it, but it was just not feasible in the time we had it, which is understandable when there's a new rifle released. And then back to what Cash was saying, this rifle, if you go back and look at the bolt and how the barrel attaches and such, this is perfect for switch barrels. Savage knows this. Hopefully they'll have a whole line of switch barrels with bolt heads and everything in between. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and visit us over on barmer.com. We do have an article over there on this, but it's a little bit shorter. And hit us up on Instagram and Facebook. And if you haven't already, please subscribe here. Thanks for watching.